Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Once again, you are all welcome in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor. Before we proceed, I want to quickly recognize one or two persons here who have taken time to be with us. I want to really appreciate um, my brother here, Dickin Van Dio, all the way from Bogorada branch. Yeah, welcome, yes, sir. Uh, Abel Dickin. Yes, sir. Seated over there is our woman leader. Yeah. Mommy, you are welcome. Yeah. Let's appreciate her. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Seated beside me here on my right is our uh, Abel Dickin, Dickin yeah. Abraham. Dickin. Please let's appreciate him, please. Amen. Amen. Seated over there is my able secretary, the wow. man back here. The king, you are welcome. The Lord bless you. The Amen. Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody very important I must not forget to introduce. Who, sir? Wow. 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 Mommy. <laughs> I, have to, I have to appreciate her because you all know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. We want to quickly go into the business of the day. Yes, sir. Yes, As you all know, we are here to name this um, beautiful and handsome child of the Lord has blessed us. After all these years of waiting, yes. it is something worth appreciating. Um, mommy? The names of this child shall be goodness. Goodness. Majesty. Majesty. Glory. Glory. Favor. Favor. Mercy. Mercy. Brethren, if I continue, I don't know if we'll live here today. I have about 22 names here. <laughs> it looks like everybody in the family gave a name. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! As you pray over this child, I just want you to stretch your hand towards this child. As you pray for this child. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen! Thank you, mighty God, for the wonderful gifts of life that you've blessed us with. We appreciate you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Majesty, you shall be great. Amen. Goodness, you shall, your life will be full of good things. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory. Evening, what is wrong with you? Throughout the naming ceremony, you, you've been acting strange. Your smiles were fake, your, your laughters were not genuine. Immediately after the naming ceremony, you rushed inside. You didn't even waste to greet people. We just had a baby for crying out loud. You should be happy. Honey, mm -hmm. I already told you. After the birth of our baby, this pain in my tummy it comes and goes. And during the naming of our baby, it came up again. And this time it was so intense, I could hardly breathe. Sweetheart, it's not true. I know you, sweetheart. It's not any form of pain. I don't believe you. We've, we've, we've been married for some time now. 
May 15th, in two months' time, will be our 11th year wedding anniversary. And the Lord has crowned our wedding with a bouncing baby boy. But since the arrival of our baby, you have been acting moody. You've been looking unhappy. What is wrong with you? Sometimes you just stay staring at the thin air, looking at nothing. Other times you talk to yourself. What exactly is wrong with you? Honey, I already told you. There's nothing. Trust me, there's nothing. It's just this pain. It comes and goes and, you know, that's just it. Then, we see the doctor tomorrow unfailingly. No, it is not necessary. I insist we see the doctor tomorrow. Welcome, sir. What have you done, Evelyn? What did I do? What is this in your hand? Our baby. Gifts from God. Goodness. Mercy. Favor. It's a boy. Here, carry him. This is not the plan. You did not wait for me. I really did. But you were not forthcoming. You were taking too long. But now I've come. But you broke the vow. I am sorry. I, I really am. I'm sorry. I'm sure you can't understand the ripple effect of what you've done yet. You messed up. I know. I know. But I'm sorry. Here. Carry the baby. No. Nope. It's not my baby. I will not carry it. I'm sorry. Please. I'm sorry. Please, carry the baby. Please. Please, carry the baby. Please. Please, carry the baby. Yes, do I know you, please? Yeah, your wife knows me very well. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> he was Christine last week. Oh, yes. <sighs> yes, I know. I was at the naming ceremony. I was around. So sorry, I didn't see you in the crowd. Mm. May I know you, please? Do you, do you live around here? Oh, yes, yes. How's the boy? He's doing very hey, fine. Fine boy. He's an answer to prayer. Oh, yes, I know. I ten years of painful and sorrowful waiting. Yeah, it was ten years of mournful groans, sorrowful pain, disgrace. Mm, I know how you felt. But now, all those moments of emotional trauma has now become history. Yeah. Um, actually, I have come to check up on uh, Melamboa. Elabosh? Well, what are you talking about? Melamboa. That is the name we gave the boy. But 
boy are you really talking about? I'm talking about Melamba. The child. Our son. No. No. This is my son. He is a gift from God. Favor. Goodness. Mercy. He is a gift from God. Well, Mr. Edward, you are mistaken. All those names you mentioned are the names you gave the boy. But I named him Melambua. Melambua Dakushi, the prince of the kingdom. Evelyn! Evelyn! Calm down, Mr. Edwards. Calm down. I've only come to let you know that you are carrying a child that belongs to the both of us. And never can he belong to you. You have no part or portion in here. He's a gift from God. He's a child of destiny. And never can he ever belong to you. Relax. Calm down, Mr. Edward. I have not come to take him away from you. I just come to let you know that he is my son also. And I will come for him when the time is due. Have a good day. Good day. Evelyn! 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 What? What? Uh, what? You screamed. What a terrible dream. What did you see? I, I saw a man in my dream. He said he came for a baby. No! God forbid it. God forbid it. No one will take my baby. Holy Spirit, you gave us this child and no one will take this child. Bible says in Isaiah 8, 18, Behold, I and the children that the Lord God Almighty has given to us are for signs and wonders in Israel. This is God's heritage. Baby, you are covered with the blood of Jesus. No one will take you from me. So you know, just, just calm down. No, no. You have to calm down. No, I will not. Wait, you just have to calm down. Hmm. Okay, okay. I've calmed down. I'm fine. I'm fine. <clears throat> Children are God's heritage. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. And the, the man, he came to check on him because he loaned him to Rob. No! I did not borrow this child from anywhere. I did not loan him from anywhere. Therefore, no one can come and take my child. And you, stop it! Stop it! What kind of foolish talk is this? With all your knowledge of the word of God, you still believe a nonsense dream? Honey, I was only recounting what the man said in the dream. And, and he said he knows you. Honey, yeah. it's just a dream. A man told you that he knows me in your dream. And you choose to believe him? You choose to believe an ordinary dream? How can you allow a dream to override the promises and the covenant of God upon our lives? Why? Uh, you know what, sweetheart? Let's pray. Yes. We can cancel yes. this yes, dream. I, I believe it. Whatever the enemy has written over our child, it shall not stand. Thus said the Lord in Isaiah chapter 8 verse 9. Associate yourself, O ye people, and give ears ye of far country. Ye shall be broken. Guard yourself, and ye shall be broken. Guard yourself, and ye shall be broken. Heavenly Father, every evil plan against my child and against my family, I destroy them in Jesus. Amen. I destroy them in Jesus. Amen. Amen. And thus says the Lord in Isaiah 54 15. Mm. Surely they shall gather together, yes. but not by me. Mm. Everyone that shall gather together against thee, for thy sake they shall scatter. Mm. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Therefore, every spirit gathering against my child and my families be broken in pieces. Amen. Scatter Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Since you woke up, what's the problem? I was the the first to 
ask you a question this morning and you pretended you were not hearing me. Me? What question? The same question I've been asking you since we had our baby. Especially on the day of the naming ceremony. When everybody were jubilating with us, rejoicing with us, you went into the room and you started crying. Why were you crying? But I have told you, ever since I had the baby, our baby, I've had this pain in my tummy. It comes and goes. And I told you we should see the doctor and you said it was not necessary. Exactly. Not necessary. <laughs> I don't believe you. Probably the pain you have is not the pain in the body, it's the pain of the heart. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what are you insinuating? You heard me? Solve the equation. Honey? Eddie! 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 Out. It's obvious I was on my way to the office. So what's the meaning of the statement you made the last time? Me? Statement, statement, statement. Please have forgotten. Can you refresh my memory? Like seriously? Honestly. That the pain I have in my tummy after the delivery of our baby, our son, is not a physical pain but the pain in the heart. Do you even know what it means to have a pain in the stomach after delivery? Do you? Sweetheart, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Honey, I don't want us to see the doctor. Why? The pain comes and goes, and it will go on its own. I'm sorry. <laughs> Funny enough, I was scared. I, I am scared that the man in my dream. Honey? Yeah? The devil can show us anything about our son. But we have the power of Jesus to withstand and resist him. Definitely. We have the power of God in us to reject whatever the devil has concerning us and our soul. Mm. You, you are absolutely correct. Uh, whatever the Lord has done is forever. No man can add to it. Nothing can be taken from it. The Lord has done this so that men may fear him. I, I believe, I believe. Yeah. Yes, this is so, so lifting and encouraging. Ecclesiastes itself. 3 verse 14. Yeah, I'm, I'm encouraged, but sweetheart, I have to be in the office. I, <laughs> I have an appointment. Don't you catch your sweetheart, please take care of you. Take care of you, please make sure you're happy. And what, what is your boss, eh? Oh, she has agreed to extend my leave with additional two weeks. That is splendid. The Lord too has done that. Yes, Let me yes, go yes. And take I have it. three more weeks to rest. Yes, I am my boss. All right, sweetheart.
food is inside. Ah, my baby is inside. You might not be lucky next time because I might have taken the baby away without you knowing it. Mr. Man, who are you? And what have you done to my baby? Or rather, our child, our son. For you know, he's part of me. No, I don't know it. I don't know what you're talking about. Really? One day you came to get this child in the guest house of our agent who sourced this loan for you. I came to you there. Have you forgotten? Nothing to remember. I don't know what you're talking about. Gashiki. Melandra Gashiki. Does that name make any sense to you? No. No. Only makes a pack of nonsense. Get out of your camouflage of pretense. You have not forgotten the night the covenant was sealed. In the guest house, have you forgotten? When this baby clocked three months in your womb, I appeared to you. When you were six months pregnant, I came to you. And on the day you were giving birth to this child, in the hospital, I was there with you when the doctor and the nurses were running around to save your life. Yes, nurse, nurse, nurse. Please, please, ask, ask my wife to him. See, We've been waiting for the past 10 years. God has answered our prayer. Please actually do it. Relax. We may have to wait her to the theater. The baby has had a bit too slow. Theater? So you just have to relax. Okay. And be praying for your wife. Okay. We may have to wheel her to the theater to save the baby and the mother. Okay. Now you can follow me to see the doctor. is not absolutely yours. That child is mine. My blood run in its name. I am part of the contract too. The contract you signed that night when you were fed up with the agonies of barrenness. And you kept on saying that I have nothing to do with this. How can you say that and without facing any consequence? That child is mine. You either agree now that I'm part of it and he's part of me, or I will take him away and take you along with him. No, no, the baby is mine, the baby is mine. You can't have him, he's a gift. God gave him as a gift to me. I will not release him to you. You cannot give to God what you received from the devil. I gave you that child, he is mine, and you know it. So you either agree that he is part of me or I will take him away from you and you will die in five minutes. God, please, spare my life. I don't want to die. Unless you agree that he is my son too. You die in three minutes. No! No! no. Two minutes. No! 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 I don't want to die. Evelyn, you are dying in one minute. He's sleeping. Oh, he's fine. Wow, such a cute baby. Ma, we should be able to go in two this time. All things being equal. <sighs> Thank you, I'm grateful. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Take, Take care, care of yourself. I will. Thank you. Just relax. Everything is under control. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. 
You got the child? Yes. I have him. He's my baby. God gave him to me. No. He's my child. My blood runs in his vein. No. He's my child. A gift from God. Leave me alone! What is it, Mr. God? You shouted that someone should leave you alone. Yeah. I was praying. I was telling the devil. The child is a gift from God to me. He's the Lord's doing and he's marvelous in our sight. You see, Lord Benta, I have waited for this child for 10 years. 10 horrible and painful years. But now, the Lord has done it. And the Lord has done it. It is permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Take care. Take care. Thank you. I see that. I honey. See, I, I got everything. The the baby board, the dusting powder, the cotton board, the hot water. See that the battle is over. Yes. The Lord has done it. It is permanently over. The baby is beautiful. It looks like me. Thank you so much for waiting. You're such a faithful woman. A liar, a stinking pretender, a camouflage, a fraud. Why can't you just tell your husband that you came to our temple to receive this child? Why can't you tell him that your faith could not carry you through all those moments of waiting? I rebuke you in Jesus' name. So now what's that? Nothing much, honey. It's just the pain around my waist. Oh, I'm so sorry. Honey, can we pray? All right. So sorry. I actually don't believe you have the audacity to pray to God. Honey, you pray. <laughs> That's better. Father, we thank you for this bundle of joy. Lord Jesus, this is what you have done. Thank you for the gift of a son. Lord, we have waited for 10 years and you have answered us. Thank you, you have brought shame to the enemies. Thank you, Lord, you have stopped people from making... I am not in support of this. The Lord has told us he's going to give us a child. He's going to make our seed great. Three or, or four days ago, I, I had a dream. I saw a child sitting on a royal throne with parchment in his hand. The, the Holy Spirit made me understand that the male child is, is giving us. shall open doors of breakthrough, doors of prosperity unto us. So I believe, as I want you to believe in the Lord God and believe in His promises, He has told us severally to be patient and wait for a child. So with that, please, let's be calm and wait patiently for His time. Uh, I, I, I've been waiting, and God knows I've been waiting. 
But to sit and do nothing is what I do not understand. I don't get it. Honey, you don't know the stigma, the shame that trails a woman that has been married for years without a child. You don't. Honey, I can feel your pain. Pain. I can feel your trauma, but you cannot be jumping around from pillar to post in search for solution. The Lord has done this, and we should relax with that you have been to several, several prayer mountain and waiting women conferences. So it's bad. Is it bad to visit uh, uh, prayer mountains and to attend waiting mother conferences? Honey, I am not comfortable with this restlessness of yours. You know what? You don't know what it means to be a barren woman. You don't. Talk for crying out loud, so that you are not barren. You're just a waiting woman. Not a barren woman. So let's remain calm. Evelyn, let's remain calm. I'm calm. I am. Really? I'm calm. I'm calm. See that? <laughs> no, you are not. If you were calm, you won't disobey me and, and visit that prophetess who, who, who came from Calabar, who, who has a gift of giving <laughs> children to barren women. Let her come. When she comes, then you, you can determine if she's a true woman of God or not. No, I don't want her in my house. You don't want to entertain a minister of God in your house? A prophetess? A woman of God? Let's remain calm in the presence of the Lord so that no man will share in his glory. Tony, please. Please. I have already told Sister Rachel to bring her this evening. And then if she comes, God will confirm if she's a true woman of God or not. Please. What is she coming to do? She's coming to visit us. She comes, she'll pray with us, and then maybe God can reveal to us if she's real or fake. Someone is at the door. Oh, she's here. Who? The prophetess. What? Prophetess Dr. Million Umbanisi. Hello. Oh. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Thank you. This is Prophetess Dr. Melion Mbani. Oh, good evening, ma'am. Good to see you. God You're bless welcome. you, my dear sister. Amen. May the glory of the Lord be upon you. Amen. You are blessed. Amen. Just come on in. Just come on in. Peace be home to this house. Amen. Thank you. Let me quickly go and inform my husband that you're here. Oh, okay. He's around. Yes. We have both been expecting the tour. Thank you. Give me a second. Honey, they're here. They're here. The prophetess and Sister Rachel, they're here. And so what? I'm not interested in seeing any prophetess in my house tonight. Honey, please. Please, don't do this to me, please. All right, all right, all right. Can you, can you just go out? I'll join you. No, we have to go together. Come on. Oh. Please, come on. How are you? May God be with you. Amen. And bless you richly. Amen. Amen. You are blessed. Thank you, ma'am. Please do have your seat. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, my, my wife was uh, just telling me uh, that you were coming this evening. Thank you so much for coming. Sister Richard, thank you so bless much. You. Thank you. Bless God. Anyway, by way of introduction, Ham Prophetess Dr. Melon Mbanese, the General Overseer of the Voice of the Barren Prayer Center, Calabar, Cross River States. My ministry has a headquarter in Calabar, 
but um, from all over the world, women who are being challenged with the issues of the womb have always come to see me. And any time I travel to cities, I do see them. And to the glory of God, they've always come back to give testimonies of the goodness of God. Getting pregnant and giving back to their home babies, boys and girls. Wow. Yeah. Just like that? Oh, yes. Just like that, my dear sister. When you believe, all things are possible. And you see, God specially commissioned me for this assignment. The Lord sent me out to put smiles on the faces of buried women all over the world. Last year, more than 70 women I prayed for have their babies this year. Mm. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. You are welcome to this house. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Actually, it was Sister Rachel who introduced your wife to me. She brought her to my hotel room. And when you came to my hotel room, you saw so many women. Yes, waiting to be prayed for. I'm sorry, dear, for keeping you so long that day. Oh, no, not, not, not a problem at all. And as you can see it for yourself, more than 30 women were in the womb that day, barren women. And as each of them see me, and I prayed for them, giving them appointment to my church in Calabar, I always assure them of having their own babies by this time this year. Uh, uh, thank you once again, ma. Thank you once again, ma. My wife is not in... Uh, my wife's case is not as this you said. Her case is different. My wife is not, is not barren. Uh, the Lord has told us we're going to have a baby. My wife is a waiting woman. She's, she's not barren, right? <laughs> oh, my brother, stop playing with words. Have you seen a waiting woman in the Bible? No. They were all barren women. Who eventually got their child when they had an encounter with some ministers of God. Women like Hannah, Sarah, Manu's wife, they were once barren women who later stepped out to have an encounter with messengers of God. They got their children. My husband never believed the prophetess. His faith is so strong in the Lord. But I, Evelyn, I was floating upon the waters of circumstances. I was being swerved here and there. The prophetess <clears throat> told me to come to her headquarters in Calabar, Cross River State. Honey, I'd rather stay without a child than to get a child from a devil. No way. Don't say that. It, you know, it is never the will of God for us not to have a child. God created everything. Even the, the, the angels that later became demons. Even the Bible says the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. Promise me you won't go to Calabar to see the prophetess. So that no one will share in God's glory over our lives. Honey, you, you, you know me. You know your wife. If you have said don't go, then I won't. Alright, so that. Thank you. The Lord said he's going to do it. So let's wait for him so that the devil does not share in his miracles of our lives. Yeah, we shall wait. But because I was not sincere, I only agreed with him to stay away from the prophetess. <clears throat> but my heart was desperately with her. And that night, I had another flash dream. Daughter of Zion, you must wait for the promise of the Father. You must never allow the devil have a hand in this. 
Father, when are you coming? I have been waiting. Soon. Very soon. Though the vision tarry, wait for it. For it will surely come to pass. He took me to the airport, and he was with me when I checked in. I boarded the plane to Lagos, and when I got to Lagos, I boarded another plane to Calabar, across River State. <laughs> My actual destination. Take it to your room. It gets up. Prophetess. God bless you. You are welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. Thank you, Prophetess. Are you surprised at this? <laughs> Don't mind this. It's just a sort of uh, therapy to relax my body. I do it all the time. You won't come again. Since you told me on phone that your husband was doubting me if I'm a minister of God or not, is he allow you to come? No. I had to find my way. Exactly. That is it. You see, hmm, men, men at times don't feel the pain barren women feel. Those men can stay for years without a child and they won't feel the pain, unlike the women. And the worst part of it is that women hit their sunset fast. When the sunset of menopause comes on you, that is bye-bye to sunshine of childbearing. Anyway, I've been there before. Mrs. Evelyn, I've been there. You were barren too? Ah, oh, for 25 good years. Jesus! 25 years of silent cry. I fasted. I prayed. I read the word. Had it like food. Quotes and drank promises like water. And he answered you? That was when I had an unforgettable encounter with the Lord. Jesus told me. He want to send me to multitude of barren women. He told me to fast for six months and several times during the fast, I will be without food and several days without water. 
And your husband agreed? He was not at first. But when he was getting worried, I left the house to one of those um, prayer mountains in Horon. And on the sixth month, one night, heaven opened and the Lord sent his angel to me. The way the Lord sent angel Gabriel to Mary in the Bible. And to Manos' wife, the mother of Samson, I saw him. Hmm. And just like the angel fed Elijah with bread of heaven, the angel of the Lord woke me up twice and he gave me bread of heaven to eat and water of heaven to drink. Water and bread of heaven? He said I should eat, for the journey is long before me. He said, I will be a helper and savior to many barren women in my generation. He said, I will not have any child, but he will give me multitude of spiritual children. And that is what I've been doing, going about cities, making way for barren women. Woman of God, can you make a way for me too? The Lord said I should wait for him. I wonder if I have not overweighted. I have been waiting. Mrs. Evelyn, you said the Lord asked you to wait. Yes. And this same God brought me to you in Abuja. And I'm telling you right now that your waiting period is over. Amen. You see, I'm the answer to the prayers of many barren women. What does the Bible say in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 5? Read it. Even the barren has born seven, and she who has many children has become feeble. That is it. The hungry will cease to hunger henceforth. Amen. And the barren shall bear seven. Amen. And you will have many children until you become feeble. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. The spiritual process is very simple. No woman needs to go through all I've went through. I've done it once and for all for any barren woman the Lord will lead me to in my generation. Woman of God, whatever the Lord will have me do, I will do to break off this chain of barrenness. There's no long spiritual process. All I need to do is to anoint you with an anointing oil. As it is in the book of James, Chapter 5, 14 to 15, which says, Is anyone sick among you? Let him send for the elders in the church, and they will anoint him in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will heal him. And if he has committed any sin, the Lord will forgive him. By the power conferred on me, may all your requests be granted. In Jesus' name. Amen. You are anointed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Is 
receive your peace. Receive your peace. Receive your peace. Come on. Come on. That's all right. That's all right. Receive your peace. Yeah. You have to keep this. You have to keep this. The next stage is to serve you with the Holy Communion of Fruitfulness. Take one and see how you request. to prepare to uh, spend the night is part of the spiritual process. Yes. They will show you to your room. You will not be able to hit anything tonight until tomorrow morning before you go. So it's a way of having overnight fast. Mm. Is that all right by you? Yes, prophetess. God bless you. Amen. The prophetess called one of the ladies to take me to my room in the guest house. I also saw other visitors waiting to be lodged in their rooms. And what happened that night was a shocker I never planned for. Here I am, my Lord, heavenly, my Lord, how are you, my Lord, heavenly, my Lord. I have been waiting. Then I've come, my dear, come to me, my Lord, how are you? Dear, my dear. Can you hear the drum beats of the kingdom? The music. The music. The music sounds so good to the ears. I am Melandra. Melandra Kashiki. I am the prince of my kingdom. Prophetess Melian of the voice of the barren prayer center came to our kingdom and informed us that we are in need of a child. Yes. Yes. I want a male child. You want a male child? Yes. I have a gift for you. Really? Yes. Gift from my kingdom. A sign of the union. How's it? Beautiful. Then. Dance with me, my Lord. Heavenly, my dear. Dance with me, my Lord. Heavenly, my dear. Every mile. 
this evening we consummate our union. Yes, my prince. Evening. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. Congratulations. What? You've had what you wanted. I. I had a bad dream. No, no. No. You've just had a divine encounter. I dreamt. And I saw this. Congratulations. You've succeeded in the process. You just had a divine visitation. So, go and begin to prepare your baby stuff. Buy baby wears, maternity outfits, and so on. How? Only one more step remains. Only one more bridge to cross. And you'll be pregnant. When you get back home, Make sure you go to bed with your husband. And that is the last order to cross. And the pregnancy will stay. I have to sleep with my husband, even if it's just once, is to seal up the covenant of divine visitation. And I will be pregnant? Excuse us. Absolutely. Thank you, Prophetess. Now listen. It's not everything you see here you must tell anybody. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 4, when Jesus healed the leper, he told him not to tell anybody. You are receiving the same when here this evening. Not even my husband? It is part of the covenant. You must not tell anyone including your husband. Because if you do, the covenant will be revoked. The baby will die. Yes. And you will fall into an incurable disease that will defy any medication. But if you keep it secret, you and the baby will live. May God bless you. My husband came to pick me up from the airport. He took me home. He suspected nothing. That night, despite his tight schedule, I made him sleep with me. And I felt a hot sensation in my womb. And I knew it. The child had come. I knew it was a male child. I didn't need to go for scan. But I went anyway, because my husband insisted. My husband danced all day. The scan showed I was carrying a male child. He gave praises to God and packaged this special offering. He was full of gratitude. But I was full of guilt and fear. My husband thought I'd held on till the end. He thought I fought the good fight of faith. But I knew I had betrayed my God and lost the battle the day I went to dine with the devil. Hello, Pastor. Good afternoon. Yes, my husband. He has gone to work. Yeah. Okay, Pastor. This evening? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Greetings to Mommy. Bye. Thank you so much, Daddy. Thank you so much. 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 Thank you
God bless you. God bless you. Mommy, thank you for coming. 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 Oh my goodness. I love the baby. Oh, he's fine. He's upstairs. He is so calm. He doesn't even trouble us at all. That's okay. Well, our visit is very brief. It is about the National Women Conference coming up in five weeks' time. I suggested to our general overseer that I will want you to come and speak to the waiting mothers and also handle one of those important sessions during the conference. Me? Yes, Sister Evening. Your testimony needs to be heard by all, to all waiting mothers in the Lord. They need to learn how to wait on the Lord without anxiously and nervously jumping from one prayer merchant to suit <laughs> This This is a great encouragement to Rosa. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is going to bless a lot of people with our, yeah. with our testimony. Uh, actually, we waited on the Lord for a very long time. The waiting was sorrowful and, and actually painful. But we waited on the Lord without compromising. Se see, several temptations came along our way that made us almost betray Christ. But we stood firmly on His promises because God has promised us and He actually fulfilled it. That is exactly the testimony we want to hear you saying to other women. Yes. We believe the Lord will use you to challenge others in similar situations to trust on the Lord's timing. Sister Evelyn. Yes, my pastor. As a guest minister, we need to get your confirmation first before we call on our general overseer on this matter. I have already informed him that you have no option than to honor this invitation because it is, it is counted a great privilege. But he still insists that we should inform you first. That is why we are here. Actually, I am still in shock, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daddy. Please help us tell Daddy Gio we are so honored. My wife and I count it a great honor to be invited to the National Women's Conference to share our testimony. And by God's grace, she's going to honor the invitation. Thank you. That's okay. Actually, um, I'm going to pray about it. Pray about it? The general overseer of our church invited you to share your testimony at the National Women's Conference and you say you're going to pray about it. Are you saying that the G.O. is working in the flesh? All I said is I'm going to pray about it. If you, do you know what you are doing? That's all right, Brother Edward. Your wife is right. She needs to pray about Daddy, it. I am insisting there is nothing to pray over in this matter. She has taught severally in the church Sunday school. She was a keynote speaker at the Workers' uh, National Conference. Then, by God's grace, speaking is not a problem. Now, the Lord has uplifted us that she's coming to share her testimony before the crowd of our waiting in the presence of the Lord for 10 years. And the Lord has answered us. And Evelyn says she wants to pray about it. Brother Edward. Sister Evelyn is still right to say she will pray over it. Mommy, you don't understand. If she's not coming for that National Women Conference, I will come and share the testimony on her behalf. No, Brother Edward. This is a women conference yes. and not for men. Well, I think we need to leave now yes, because yes. we actually left the children at home. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, come on. That's okay. I'm sorry, Pastor. It's okay. Yes, sir. It is well with you, my sister. Yes, sir. Right, my dear, let's go. All right, Daddy. Thank you so much, sir. Let me walk you to the car. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Evelyn? What is this that you have just done? A whole general overseer of the church invited you all the way from Lagos to come and share your testimony at the National Women's Conference and you turned down the invitation. I never turned down the invitation. All I said was, I'm going to pray about it. You don't know what you have done. You actually turned down the invitation and the pastor knew it. If, if 
Evelyn, Evelyn, just to come and share testimony and you are praying about it. Evelyn, what is wrong with you? I just don't know what is wrong. What do you think might have caused such reaction from Sister Evelyn? Honestly, <laughs> I'm even surprised myself that Sister Evelyn will reject that the Jews request. <laughs> All I know is that that the Jew never makes any move if he's not sure of it. So how are we going to pass this message across to him now? That Sister Evelyn says she will pray over it and get in touch with him. He says we should call him back this evening and feed him back that we've informed her that he will send the official invitation to her tomorrow. Well, I will tell him as it is. You know, I can't hide anything from Daddy Jew. That's true. We will tell him what we heard and then we will leave him to make his decisions. Hello, sir. Good day, sir. Hello, Pastor Joseph. Thank you. Have you gone to meet her about the invitation? We're just coming back now. We're just thinking of giving you the feedback when you called. I'm sorry. You have to help me call her back and apologize. I'm sorry, sir. Daddy, I, I, I don't understand. What, what, can you come again, sir? You would have to help me call her and tell her the invitation is no longer necessary again. Ah, we were actually worried that, that she could not jump at the offer with joy. She actually said she was going to pray about it, then she would get back to us. Really? She actually said that? Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. This is a confirmation of what the Lord told me. So you have to call her back and tell her the invitation is no longer necessary again. It's okay, sir. I will do just that, sir. Thank you very much and have a good night. Do have a pleasant night as well, sir. Daddy has cancelled the invitation. Oh, God of mercy. The Spirit of God has told Daddy everything about it. He actually said it was a confirmation of what the Lord told him. There must be something fishy about this. I can't imagine why Sister Evelyn will reject such a wonderful invitation. Hmm. Unless you give me a reason why you turned down the GO's request, you have to call the pastor and tell him you're sorry for the response you gave when he came. I cannot. No! I will not go there and speak. I cannot. I know what I'm talking about. Please, I am sorry. I cannot. Why? Why? Evelyn, why? Stop shouting at me! Stop! Stop! Not until you tell me why. The pastor just got back. Thank God. Evelyn. 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 The Lord is using this opportunity to uplift us before the multitude and to reward us for all our years of waiting. Evelyn, the Lord is also using us as an encouragement for those in similar furnace. Evelyn, please don't blow this chance. Pick the call. Alright, alright. Wait, move on. Tell him I've reconsidered I changed my mind I'll accept the invitation. Good evening, sir. I I'm sorry the phone has been ringing since, sir. That's no problem, brother Edward. I just called to inform you that the invitation given to Sister Evelyn has been cancelled. No, no, not at all, sir. We're, we're about calling you, sir. She has reconsidered the offer and she's, she's ready to honor the invitation, sir. Well, it was the general overseer himself who said she's no longer needed as the speaker for the conference. We've just finished speaking to him now. My greetings to your wife. Bye-bye. Goodbye, sir. Please.
please help me. Release me from these shackles. Set my mind free. Out of your own stubbornness and free will, you walk into a web of shackles that the enemies have used to bind your heart. My Lord, I'm so sorry for this. I am sorry. I am sorry. I told you to wait for me. I gave you several promises of what I was going to do to you and your testimony. I told you a lot of daughters of Zion are looking for role models whose story can inspire them to wait for the time of God. Oh God! From generation to generation, I do raise selected daughters of Zion that will stand before me in the capacity of Hannah, Rebecca, Elizabeth and Sarah, through which I could usher in chosen messengers of God who will greatly affect their generation and fulfill my purpose. You were one of them, but you succeeded in distorting my plans. My Lord, I am sorry. Oh God, I am sorry. I have just shown you what I was raising you up to do worldwide. When your general overseer came to you, giving you the invitation for the National Women Conference to encourage other women in similar situations. That is how Ula began. But I came to him and told him that you are not qualified and worthy to stand before my daughters of Zion. Ah. Ah. Anna waited for Samuel. Rebecca waited for Jacob and Esau. Elizabeth waited for John, and Sarah waited for Isaac. You waited for 10 years, and you fumbled at the end of the journey. You will have waited six months more, six months, and you will have entered into your season of divine breakthrough. Instead, you opted for an Ishmael. My God! My God! How did you get into this chapter? Oh my Lord, I was deceived. I was deceived! You fell into the hands of false prophets. You were so anxious and nervous that you forgot all the covenants and plans I made with you. My Lord and oh my God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, oh God! According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Wash me, wash me and cleanse me from my sins. You forgot there's a whole generation waiting for you while you were waiting for the promised child. People, women and ladies who will have tapped from the abundance of Flowing rivers of your destiny. I know my transgressions, Lord, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, you only have I seen and, and done this great evil in your sight. Look this direction. Do you know this man? Yes, my Lord. He came to threaten me all the time. Because you willingly entered into a pact with him. He desecrated the altar inside your temple and gave you a seed of evil. Lord, I stand here to affirm that this woman and her child belong to me. Shut up there. I do not call you into this meeting to speak. Yes, Lord. I'm just saying that by law of captivity, this woman was looking for a child and she came to us and entered into an oath with us. And therefore, she's in the bondage of our oath. And the oath is for life. Says who? Who has spoken and it comes to pass when the Almighty have not commanded? Is it not from the mouth of the Lord that good and bad comes? Whatever you say here, 
has no hold. I will have mercy on whom I choose to have mercy upon and show compassion on whom I choose to have compassion. That is mine, Lord. Not absolutely, Gashiki. The night you slept with her and gave her your evil seed, it amounted to nothing. Not until her ordained husband came to her. Lord, you see, the two seeds have mixed up together and become one. The holy seed has been corrupted by the evil seed. And the seed has become entirely evil. Gashiki, have you not heard it from the scripture? The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. I will separate the wheat from the tears when the time comes. My Lord, I thought you would command him to release me from these shackles. Please help me. Go and do the needful. Your shackles will fall off your hand when you do the needful. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Thank you. Thank you, my Lord. Why are you looking for my son, goodness? Where is my son? I have come to take him away. The covenant has been broken. I have no covenant or oath with you. Your wife signed the covenant on your behalf. And you came in to seal it. So, where is my son? No, I don't have any covenant or agreement with you. My son, goodness, is my first and only child. A result of 10 years of waiting in the presence of the Lord. And that child? The result of faithless action of compromise. The child is a symbol of wasted years of waiting. You see, you are holding on to a child that contains my blood and my sweat. What dark things are you saying, strange man? We are Smelamboa, the Koshi, my son. I've kept him far from here. I will not release him unto you. He is my son. Wicked man! Alright then. The dead man does not fight for the living son. We are his my son. Dakushi! Gashiki. He said you entered into a covenant with him on my behalf. Who is he? Convenant? He said, he said our child is a result of faithless actions of compromise and worthless years of waiting. Who is he? Ah! Evelyn, what have you done on my behalf that I don't know? Ah, Jesus. Evelyn, what covenant did you enter on my behalf? Ah, Jesus. Holy Spirit, help me. I keep seeing this man in my dream. And he always demands for our son. And I keep telling him, the son is ours, and no devil can take him away from me. Yes. Yes, I believe. I believe. What covenant did you enter into on my behalf? I will talk. I will talk. I will say everything. I will say everything. Oh. 
Uh, hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, daddy. Actually, I've been trying to call back, but the network is bad. Yes, I got a message concerning the suggested minister. Who gave that suggestion? Yes, sir. It was, um, I think, uh, Deacon Edgar that suggested we invite her. Yes, he said that um, he has been in most of her administration and I've seen God move tremendously. Yes, he also said that the woman of God carries a great anointing for women and waiting mothers. I think um, I remember he say, also said that the last time she came into town, that she prayed for most of the waiting mothers and miraculously said that this year almost all of them have gotten their children. Thanks for the information. I know her very well. Oh, you know her very well? Oh, now praise God. Well, I don't know how much, um, Daddy, but um, I think I've seen most of her pictures in several posters and banners in most of the churches around. So, so she like go ahead and inform the women's secretary to invite her immediately? No, don't invite her. I know her. Prophetess Melian Banisi. Yes, yes, that's her name. So should we invite her, sir? No, no. Daddy, please, I, I'm sorry, but I just want to know, is there any reason why we should not invite her? Apparently, yes. I may not be able to give you some details now, but her spirit cannot work with our spirit. She carries a different spirit. Ah, Jesus. Oh, have you invited her already? No, Daddy, we've not. We've not done that yet. Okay, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. This cannot be. Hello, yes, brother Edward. I'm surprised you're calling me at this time of the day. Hope all is well with you. Daddy, good evening, sir. I didn't even know you were going to be awake at this time. I just felt led to call you. What's the problem? I hope it's well with you. It's, it's my wife. She's been crying since. She said she has something to tell me. And that somebody told her she's going to die if she tells me. Brother Edward, please calm down. Sir, I just need help before I resort to something more terrible. Can I ask you a question, Brother Edward? Did your wife have anything to do with the woman of God that came into town last year before she became pregnant? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prophetess Melia Mbadisi. Yes. Did she come to your house or you went to her? No, no, sir. We, 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 we didn't go to her house. She came to my place. It was Sister Rachel that brought her to my place. Which of the Sister Rachel are you talking about? Is it um, Dickin Edgar's wife? Yes, sir. But uh, we didn't go to her place. She came to my house. Sir, I didn't even welcome the idea of her coming to my house in the first place. My spirit was against her. My wife prevailed over me. And I had to allow her coming to my house. So, sir, Sister Richard brought her and I did like how much she said. Pastor, sir, please tell me what the problem is. Does it have to do with my wife? That's okay. Just give me some time, I'll call you back. Thank you, Daddy. Good night, sir. Evening. Look at me. What did Prophetess Melian Mbanese do to you? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm sorry to disturb you at this time of the night. Just that um, it's important I keep you informed on this, sir. Go on, Pastor. Sir, I've just finished discussing with Brother Edward concerning Prophetess Melo. Yes, because I heard she was in town last year, invited by one of the churches close by. I also heard that she visited 
or Edward's house. I just discussed with him now to know if the wife, if the wife was the prophetess before she became pregnant. And what did he say? He actually confirmed it that the prophetess visited their house, but that the wife did not contact her further. All right, thank you. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Good night, sir. Sweetheart, why are you doing this to me? Honey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about what? Everything that I put you through. That is exactly the point. You need to tell me about everything. Who is Melambo? Who is Gashiki? Gashiki. Gashiki is... trying to break the oath of secrecy. You can kill me, but you cannot have our son. You cannot have my son. Italy, why would I want to kill you or kill my son? <laughs> I will not only kill you, I will make you miserable before you die. You lie! You lie! You can do all you like to me. You can do all you like to me. You cannot help myself! Evelyn, why would I want to make you miserable? What is happening, Evelyn? One more word from your mouth and you will breathe your last. Evelyn, Evelyn, <laughs> don't talk to me. Talk to me. Sweetheart, <laughs> please help me. But sweetheart, how will I help you when all you have been saying has no correlation? You said I want to kill you. You said I want to take our son. So now what is happening? It is. It is. This is the last time I'm going to use this whip. Next time, it's going to be the song and we shall end everything at once. Sweetheart, what, what is happening? Gashiki! Leave me alone! Show me he dead! Help me, I pray. In Proverbs 28, verse 13, He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. When you begin to expose the hidden secrets of darkness, then your help shall begin to come. My Lord, Gashiki said he would kill me. And my baby will die if I break the oath of secrecy. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things that are done in secret. For all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is the light. Ephesians 5, 11 to 13. Exactly. I am sorry for my foolishness, my lord and my king. Please break these shackles off my neck and set me free. Gashiki said he would take my baby away from me. Even the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. And the prey of the terrible shall be set free. I will contend with they that contend with you. And I will show mercy upon your children. Thank you, my lord. Yes, sir. She just screamed and collapsed on the floor. Yes, doctor. I think she's unconscious. I don't know if she's breathing or not. 
I think I'll just bring her to the hospital. Thank you, sir. You cannot escape from my shackle. I stand upon the covenant, unholy covenant we made together. The hope of secrecy that we signed together. On the bed that night, when the moon stood straight in the sky and the seven stars of the chamber converged together to brighten your path. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. Hmm. But I will contend with them that contend with you, and I will save your children. All right. You have banned by hand both an irrevocable, unbreakable oath. No! I am breaking the unbreakable oath already by the undefeatable power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Perhaps we have to end all the discussion here once and for all. You are breathing your last, and I'm taking the child along with me. In the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot touch me anymore. For the word of God says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Hmm. Gashiki or whatever name you call yourself, the Lord has delivered us from your hand and from the power of your oath. Does this one know what he's saying at all? Oh yes, he knows what he's talking about. For my Bible tells me in Matthew 18, 19 that if two shall agree together concerning anything, it shall be done by my Father in heaven. So we are standing in agreement to remove your shackles from our hands and necks. Keep speaking, honey. He hears you. Thus said the Lord Gashik, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine, so that all flesh may know that I am the Lord, thy Savior and thy Redeemer the mighty one of Jacob. sweat runs in his vein. He is my child. He is mine. No! 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 This is what the Lord Jesus Christ told me in Matthew 15, 13. Every tree that my father has not planted shall be uprooted. has to be laid. I will not build on a faulty foundation. So go and sin no more.
Before you, before you came, sir. God, I begged you. I begged you. I said I was sorry. I said I was sorry. God, why? Why, my The Lord, my Father, has forgiven me all my foolishness. I need you, my husband, <laughs> to forgive me. I am deeply sorry. I was stubborn and disobedient. <laughs> Even when you told me that your spirit did not agree with the prophetess, I did not believe you. I lied <laughs> that I was going to Lagos to see my uncle who had just come back from Germany. I went to Calabar across River State. I went to see the prophetess when I entered into all that foolish demonic work. My husband, I am deeply sorry. <laughs> I was too hasty and anxious. I threw my faith away. And only, <laughs> only succeeded in making our journey longer. Ah. I am sorry! <laughs> I am sorry! We have come to pray for you. Yeah. We will not be taking your time. Yes, I have a vigil after this, this prayer we are having. Yes, and uh, the prayer is for both of you. That's why I came with your pastor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for opening the abortion of sins away. Thank you for opening a new chapter for them on your team. Amen. Thank you for the wonderful promise you have for them. Amen. We pray for them today. Mm. Let there be rain of joy and surprise for this couple again. Amen. God do for them what no man can do. Amen. And listen to this, my dear brother and sister. Mm. I have the word of God say specifically for you. Mm. Isaiah 61 verse 7. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Amen. And instead of confusion, you shall have your portion. Amen. Therefore, in your land, you shall possess double. Amen. 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 
everlasting joy shall be yours. Amen. 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 We believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That scripture is a new covenant. Amen. May all this come to pass in your lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And hear this again from Joel chapter 2, verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. Amen. Amen. The canker worm and the caterpillar one and the palmer one, my great army, which I sent among you. Amen. 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 We see you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory with you. Amen. As we walk in this council. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Daddy. Thank, Thank you, you so Daddy. much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much. It is well with you. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you so much, Pastor. Daddy, we're grateful, sir. Let me help you with those, sir. Let me help you with those, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pastor, thank you so much. 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 Prophetess Melon of Waiting Mother Prayer Center International Calabar. Yes, I know it's Prophetess Melon. How are you? Ask my sister. How's the baby? When are they coming to Calabar? Ah, uh, she's okay by God's grace. Ah, uh, the Lord has delivered us from the shackles of prophetic demonic manipulations. She's no longer interested in, in any offer from your end. All things are passed away and all things have become near. The Lord has closed the old chapter and opened a new chapter unto us. May God change your heart and turn you back from serving as a satanic agent that lures weak-hearted women and ladies into eternal captivities. Bye-bye, prophetess. May you find Jesus Christ. Hear this word of God from the book of Jeremiah 14, 14 to 15. And the Lord said to me, The prophets prophesied lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesied to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, and deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus said the Lord concerning the prophets who prophesied in my name, whom I did not send, and who said, Sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine, those prophets shall be consumed. My children, my children, hear my voice and calm your spirits and listen to me. You don't have to look anywhere. Be 
Because I am right here I am all that you need hey. Have you forgotten I made rivers to part I make the mountains to move I tell the sun where to shine Don't you know that I have heard all your cry And I have heard all your prayers You should just hold your ground Hold your ground Oh, oh, oh my child Do not turn away Your movement will go Sometimes I wish that you could see The wonderful future That I have for you hey, hey, hey. If only you could take a moment To come into my presence And open your eyes Hey have you forgotten you were chosen for a reason? You are a shining example of the things I can do. The story of your testimony will fly across all of the nations if you just hold your ground.